All right, it's Cameron again. I'm here with Christine. Uh, we're in Hermit Park this time, and uh, we're about to look at her garden. Um, this is a, a very different garden. It's on a, a smaller block, obviously, and it's uh, well, very well established, and it's looking beautiful. And so. I've been here since 1985, and um, the first thing I decided to do was plant a native garden in Townsville, um, not knowing that people didn't really know what was native to Townsville, so I've got a lot of mistakes. I've probably planted a thousand plants and I've left with about 80. Okay, now under here is my favourite lamandra. Not this one. This is my worst lamandra. Okay. You can't dig them out, you can't kill them, but I planted lots of them believing that they were going to look really good. Then we went to Deepwater Creek and I saw this one under the stairs and that is my favourite lamander. So it's is it a beautiful. form of lamander longifolia or is it a different species? I of think thing? it's a lamander longifolia. Okay. But in the old days when they called lamander longifolia lamander hystrix, yep. this was sold as longifolia but it's now called hystrix. Yeah, so, so and I know. all the nurseries called it hystrix way after its name had changed. So I bought the wrong one there. You need a, a bomb to get them out of the ground. But this one is really, really lovely. So do you find that there's a difference in the ability of both types of lamandra to tolerate dry conditions? This one tolerates anything. I think you'd grow that in Antarctica and it wouldn't die. But the, um, the local one, it's, it just loves it. And you can see these two are the same age and the one further back in the shade just really loves it. You can just imagine it on the bank of Deepwater Creek or Old House Creek. I love mulch. Yeah. As you can see, I make so much mulch, I bag it up and give it to my garden clients. Because oh. There's just so much mulch, I give it away. Okay, now, this isn't native to Townsville, but I just love it. This is Grevillea venista, yep. which is the parent of marmalade and a few other hybrids. But it is just beautiful. I planted these in 1985, and this one has rotten, what started at the house, and it's like a desert mile. It's fallen, fallen down and rooted and fallen down and rooted. And then this is one of its seedlings. One of its very own seedlings. So, All right, and it's obviously a species because it's come exactly true to type. Yeah, and um, Byfield Grevillea, it's called Grevillea venista. And when I saw it growing in Byfield near Yapoon, I was in the bush, I was absolutely wrapped. While we're at the front here, these are Nemesiides. Oh, okay, yep. All self germinated. And they ought to be called acacia. I'm going to germinate near the fence line because <laughs> no matter, they germinate right on the fence line, and it's the one thing I have to prune because the postman keeps bumping himself out. Oh, really? Because they just want to germinate right on the fence for some reason. So that there's a whole group of those: acacia, hemlei, or is it Ramiflora? Or... Simsei, yeah. Decora. Yeah, they're all very, very, very similar. Very similar. Yeah. They've got them growing now, and you can really see the difference. Hemisphere eyes in the sand here in Hermit Park has grown that high, and I used to say it used to grow to three metres. It's more like about five. Yep. Whereas Simsei, I used to think was its drop-dead cousin, it's much smaller and sparser. So the two of them do really well. The case of Simsei with the balls, and hence the eye with the rods. And they both are brilliant screen trees. They germinate whenever you want them to, yep. and you never have to prune them. They just really, oh, except when the postman comes. So they're really great. The terminalias behind them And are, on the front verge, I see. And on the front verge um, are from just local and don't know what they are. I've tried to work them out a few times. Por porphyry carpa, whatever it's probably called. Probably might be porphyry carpa, yeah. <laughs> Things that have come up that I'm not fussed on and I do get rid of all the time are the macarangas. Okay. So the macarangas come up and all the stumps you can see, 
they're macaranga stumps because I they just germinate everywhere. Which way we go? Whichever way you like. <clears throat> Is that a Leah Indica there? That's a Leah Indica, but I'm really disappointed because I thought it would grow really well here. Having seen the ones in the botanic gardens around town, I'm absolutely shocked that they're so beautiful. Whereas this is probably 10 years old. 10 that, years old? Yeah. Oh. And it dies off every year and then comes back again. So it's never been any more than that. Okay. So, Oh, well, you win some, you lose some. I think <laughs> that might be my nemesis. I think Leah Indica in Hermit Park's nothing like Anderson Park. Um, Eugenia, now this, if I'd have known when I started, I wouldn't have planted many of these. This is Eugenia Rhinewardiana, but it's the Cedar Bay cherry form. It's the form from up near Cooktown. Whereas now I know what a delight the local form is of Eugenia Rhinewardiana. I'm going to plant some of them when we get them growing at the nursery. What we didn't mention was uh, Christina has, for the last several years, been the manager of the local uh, bush garden nurseries. Most members would already know that, obviously, but for those that are watching this that, are, that aren't members, uh, you know, Christina is uh, a nurseryman, a botanist, uh, lots of qualifications in the industry, so we're very lucky to have her. And here's the mystery tree. The Escap mystery tree is Bacchasia tetrapera. Very good, yep, on the money. And this was from one of Keith Townsend's pots, and I think it's found a lovely spot. In the dry season, it looks a bit sad, but I don't water. Mm. I don't water at all, so um, it just has to look after itself. And obviously with the rainy season, it's just looking absolutely beautiful. Oh. I always get muddled. Of all the plants I get muddled at in Townsville, it's the Graptophyllums. Excelsum or Alicifolium, I can never tell. But once again, I bought this as an SGAP show 20 years ago off Keith Townsend. And yeah. it's the one with the pink flowers. And it's absolutely beautiful. This is my duck's foot, and once again, I didn't think this was local, but people tell me it grows on Maggie, so it's staying. Yep, I told you that it's growing on Maggie, because <laughs> I grabbed some seeds only a couple of weeks ago, and I have two seedlings in pots. Yeah, very nice tree, very unusual tree. Everybody knows Tuckaroo, um, and this is Cupaniopsis wadsworthii. Uh, so, and Cupaniopsis anacardioides is a very common tuckaroo, which is grown as a street tree all over Australia. And tuckaroo germinates so often in this garden, I pull them out all the time. Mm. I'm forever pulling out peanut trips, Tequilia quadrifidus seedlings, yep. and Cupaniopsis anacardioides. This is one of my favourite trees. Pam asked me what's one of my favourites, and I wish this could grow a bit faster. At Mundy Creek, they planted one two years ago, and it's ten times higher than this. This is ten years old. Ten. This is Diospis germinata. Yep. Absolutely beautiful tree, and I'm hoping that it might. I even made a mound for it. This is called um, Snake Dreaming, this mound. Okay. Um, to lift the plants up out of the ground a bit. This is... Another one of my hate you, hate you, hate you plants. Never grow it again. I ate the fruit off one at Shelbourne Bay and thought it was the best bush tucker ever. Fluegia varosa. I've grown it at home and it's not a garden plant. I love it in the creek plantings at Ross Creek, but I poured metho all over it and tried to set fire to it and it's still coming. <laughs> <laughs> Long arching canes, yeah. Another favourite, favourite tree, Gossia Big Willy Eye. Just beautiful. It had one fruit on it this year after 15 years, but it's just looking absolutely gorgeous. 
the reason I want one of these, being a mangrove botanist, you're stinking hot, you've got mozzie spray all over you and mud, you want something nice and cold, you just go up and lean your cheek against the trunk of this and it's just so dense and cold. Obviously a slow grower if it's going to have dense wood and it's just beautiful. Gossy a big willy eye. This is Taka, Taka leontopetaloides. Just amazing. One stem and one leaf. Just gorgeous. And then we can either grow it from the corm or the bulb, which is used in the Torres Strait for sop sop, yep. Torres Strait arrowroot, or we can grow it from the seeds that come out of these beautiful fruit. I was absolutely wrapped when I went to the World Heritage Lowland Rainforest on the central coast of New South Wales to find that they're one of the major canopy trees oh. in the Lowland Rainforest in um, central New South Wales. So that's absolutely great. Please mention the little grass. Oh, and here's the little grass again. Now this is just beautiful. It dies off in the dry season and look at it now. A couple of weeks of rain and it just looks stunning. Yep. Wombat berry is a favourite plant and I tell the clients that if you want a wombat berry shaped like a shrub, take it away from a tree and it'll have hundreds of stems of its own and it'll be about a metre high. But if you want a lovely cascading curtain coming down out of your tree, absolutely beautiful. Um, somebody said to me, whenever you want a row of trees, it never works. But put them in a clump and it doesn't matter what height they are. These are my Alexandra palms. There were six and now we're down to five. And these are from 1985. So they're just going so beautifully. Really great. Bowbirds like to try and build their bowers under here, but the um, they don't, never seem to have much luck because there's not many twigs. This is Philanthus lampophilus. Yep. And absolutely delightful filler. It just fills in little gaps wherever you want it. The same as this filaria. This is another delightful little filler. Oh, we have fruit on there. Beautiful red fruit. This is filaria octandra, related to the beautiful scented one, the filaria, I can't think of the name. But this is octandra, and it does have a scent, but not as much as the other one. Above it, I am really lucky. I got two sexes of the white mulberry. So the male and the female. White mulberries are the best edge effector plant. So in here, nobody can see us. And you wouldn't realize that two meters away is a lawn and kids and room to play. Whereas in under here, we've got this delightful two white mulberries that are just really great. So what did you call it, an edge effect plant? An edge effect. The edge effect, you can see here, you can't see out. Yep. So even though the back of the plant is really scrawny and looks really gaggy and under the shade, the outside, the sunny side of it, has this beautiful shaded screen effect. Okay. So when we go around the outside, we'll see what a screen it is, but in here we've just got this lovely jungle. Okay, let's do that now. Okay. Here we are on the other side of the white mulberry. Oh. This is the white mulberry. Yes. And you can't believe that a moment ago we were just hiding in under there. <laughs> that is a nice, thick, dense screen, isn't it? That's how that's pictures.
This is one of my favourites, Millicote Rubra, and it's just coming into its lovely square fruit. Just beautiful. Here's a Simsai, germinated itself. And under here, struggling away, and not one flower this year because they're in too much shade, are the cardwell lilies. Five years ago, this was an ocean of white flowers, and now with all the shade, not one of them flowered. So what do I do? Do I shift the cardwell lilies out into the sun, or do I prune? I think I might shift the cardwell lilies out into the sun. See the white jasmine? Yes, simplicifolium, um, is it? Yeah, what, uh, no, that's um, didymum. Oh, it's di I think yeah. it's subspecies. Yeah, yeah, I like didymum more because simplicifolium is a bit stiff, oh, yeah. whereas didymum is lovely and soft and wavy and it goes really well. So, is that. A buchanania up there? That is a non-known uh, Eleocarpus. Oh, really? Nobody's been able to name it for me, and I know by the flowers that it's definitely not a Townsville or a Paluma species. It's got the most beautiful, big, creamy flowers. I bought it at a commercial nursery, and it's just beautiful. It hardly ever has fruit, but it has the most beautiful, big, creamy flowers. And with all the other Eleocarpus, it's pollinated by moths. So the flowers hang down and the moths go up into the flower. It's just beautiful. In August, that is just a mass of cream bells. Beautiful. <coughs> well, that's a special tree. So, and here's my grasses. When I don't have a veggie garden, I have grasses. And this is nine on grass. So it just goes really well. This is the mulch heap and the grass is just clump. When comes the veggie season and I decide I'll have veggies again, all I gotta do is just pull out a clump and use it for mulch and there we are, I'll get my veggie garden back again. All right, what's the species? Any pagan robustissimus, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, so it's really great. And here is the best fruit tree in the garden, a smelly cheese fruit or rotten cheese fruit, Marinda citrifolia. Just, just has shaped itself to the garden. And that is a pretty nice tree. Doesn't mean I like to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and close related to the noni fruit, obviously. So. It is the noni fruit. Okay, yes, same, same species? Same species. Okay, and naturally grows in all of the sandy country all along the coast around Townsville. This is the Filaria we saw before, the Filaria of Kendra with yep. its beautiful white flowers. With flowers on in the sunshine. This is Cisidium tinianum. And I can't wait till the buttresses look like the one in St Anderson Park. The buttresses snake out across the lawn in Anderson Park and I'm giving it a run for its money. <laughs> and that's been in since 1985 as well? 1985, yep. So that's definitely a local tree too. That grows all through Jerama Falls National Park and along creek lines, I believe. Yep. This is, never had any luck with this. Oh, Melodorum. Yeah, Melodorum, Rowan Hoffia, oh. all the names you can find for it. Mount Stewart, it's flat on the ground at the lookout and absolutely covered in beautiful flowers. Here it goes up to the top of the Syzygium and back down again. And it's never had a flower on it. I get really excited when I see a bud on it, but they've never flowered yet. Yeah. Bright yellow, the ones at Mount Stewart have got the lovely yellow teeples, but this, no. And I've just given the neighbour, she has a swimming pool, and I've just given her a couple of these to plant near her swimming pool yep. because they don't drop leaves. It's one. Of, it's a really good tree. It's a gardenia. It's Randia Fitzalanai. Not anymore. 
<laughs> attracted carpus with Sal and I and it's just a beautiful tree to grow anywhere. There's dark green leaves, can be under the shade or out in the full sun and has fruit the size of a tennis ball. Yeah. In behind the pawpaws is a lovely, another lovely gardenia. This is Zarsenakia and it likes the sun so that's why it's out here next to the tuki, chook patch. Beautiful buttery cream flowers that start off white and as they get older turn cream and by the time they drop onto the ground they're a beautiful buttery colour. Mm. Sandpapery yep. leaves and that's Gardenia ocreata, just a beautiful small tree. And fragrant? Yeah, very fragrant, absolutely fragrant. So here we have a, a beautiful big paper oak tree planted by Christine. How approximately how long ago? 1985. Yep. Yeah, and um, it's just beautiful. I when I was up at Cardwell visiting people in Cardwell, I thought I've just got to have them. They grow in the swales up there behind the beach, and it's not going to fall down. It's just solid as a rock. I just love it. I'm just going to have a paper oak. The little guy next to it is Dianella Taxis. Not a townsville plant, and as you can see, it's got the much broader leaf than Dianella cerulea, which is in the front garden. But Dianella Taxis copes in full shade. Oh, and you've got a black palm as well, I see. Yeah, I've got a black palm. That was a present, which is really great. Don't see them very often. That's uh, the end of uh, episode three of Garden Exploration for the Native Plants Queensland group. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks, Christine, for having me again. Um, and I'll see you on the next episode. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. That was fun.